Hey there. I, I, I've decided to post the events of the past few days to this website since I think it wouldn't really belong anywhere else. I've had my phone for a good two years and take pretty good care of it. It just has a few scratches and is in great condition. Because of this, I've had the same phone number for those two years. Have you really ever thought about how often you give out your phone number? Probably not. It's okay. Neither did I until recently. But when you look at it, your personal number is given out any time you share it with a friend, fill out a job application, fill an online form that needs it, and probably anything having to do with a credit or debit card. Your phone number really isn't that hard to get. That kind of worries me, mainly because I don't like the idea of my personal information being that readily available. But it is. Yours is too. I'm in a military family, and will be moving out to live on my own soon. Because of the military part, we move a lot, and just about four months ago, this planted us in Texas. On the second month here, I was waiting for a job interview at a local store when I got a call from a number I didn't personally recognize. What caught me even more was that the number was calling from Escondido, California, a place I had never even been to, let alone heard of. I answered the phone, expecting some telemarketer or something, but nobody spoke when I said hello. There wasn't any noise or anything. I know it wasn't a prank because there wasn't even any cliché heavy breathing into the receiver. I could kind of hear something muffled, but couldn't make it out. After about 10 seconds of waiting for a reply, I comically said, Hey buddy, I think you pocket dialed me, and hung up. Side note, I didn't get the job. Fast forward to October. The week of Halloween, I managed to find a job and had completely forgotten about the random call from Escondido. Turns out, Halloween week is the busiest week for most pizza places in the area. And I had planted a job in the most popular pizzeria in town. So, that Monday after school, I drove straight to the place and worked until dark. That night, after my shift, at about 10 p.m., I was on my computer browsing my favorite funny picture website, Funny Junk Veteran, when I got a call from the number again, Escondido, California. I let it ring for a bit, seeing if they would quit trying, but eventually, curiosity got me, and I found myself answering. Once again, my hello was melt with silence. All that I could hear were strongly muffled noises that I couldn't place. So I hung up and assumed that maybe they had my number in their call history from the last call and they accidentally managed to select it through their pocket dialing. Two days later, I was working a bit late and the pizzeria closes at 11. It was about 9.30. Normally by then, the only people ordering pizzas are high or just off work and usually come in. At about 9.40, the pizza ordering line started ringing. The only people on staff were me and one other co-worker. So after a quick argument, it was decided that I would take this call and that he would clean the dough rollers to make us even. I went to the phone and felt a bit of a chill. The caller ID read Escondido, California. This was the first time 
I had really been worried about the number. They had managed, somehow, to find out where I work and got the number. So, I answered it hesitantly, greeting them with the normal, Hello, this is Pizza Place name. What would you like to order? Once again, I was met with the muffled silence. Only this time, about five seconds in, I made up the sound of a car door shutting. Then they hung up. I was kind of worried that they knew where I worked and took the time to even get the number. So I called my manager and asked him if I could go home early. He obliged. I hung up my apron and left through the back door and got in my car. I drive a basic SUV with the whole foldable back seats to create more space. Well, the first thing I noticed when getting into my car was that one of the back seats were folded. I quickly looked around the car, but that's all that was changed. I immediately remembered the, the sound of a car's door shutting in the call only 15 minutes earlier. It started to really freak out. Whoever was calling me had been in my car. I drove home as fast as I could and tried to tell my parents, but they were convinced that a co-worker was playing a Halloween prank on me. The next day, I didn't receive any calls from the number and nothing weird happened. It was a normal day. I was partially relieved, but also highly confused. I finally decided to do what should have been obvious. I called the number back. I pulled it up in my call history and pressed the call button. It didn't ring or anything. And almost instantly, I heard a woman's voice chime in. We cannot complete your call. Please try again. I tried again, only to receive the same message. I put my phone away. I was about to head to bed when my phone started ringing again. Escondido, California. I answered it and immediately said, This is a pretty good prank, but really, could you please just stop? There was just silence and the same muffled sounds that I couldn't really place, just like the first call. But there was one sound that took me a second to recognize. The muffled sound of a sprinkler. I looked out my window and saw that my mom had decided to leave the sprinkler on for the night in the backyard. I wanted to believe it was coincidence. But the rhythm of the sprinkler sounds were in sync. Whoever was on the other end of the line was in my backyard. I hung up and called the police. Two officers showed up and looked around the backyard, but said that nothing was there and that if the problem persisted, to call them back. So my family locked down the house for the night, and I tried to sleep with very little luck. Nothing happened after that, though. The week went fine, even on Halloween. On Saturday, my stepfather asked me to clean out the shed and tidy up the backyard before heading to work. I went out and grabbed all of my little brother's toys and carried them off to the shed. When I opened it, I was confused to see a sleeping bag set up in the middle of it, with two empty water bottles next to it. Someone had been living in my shed for at least a day, and I knew it was whoever had been stalking me. So I devised a plan to make sure it was them. I took my dad's pager that evening, and his backup one, 
and set it up so that whenever I wanted, I could page one with the other, which would result in an ungodly beeping sound. I hid one in the shed and locked up the house to go to bed. At 3 a.m., I woke up to my phone ringing, Escondido, California. I quickly grabbed the pager and answered the phone. I answered with a shaky hello and hesitated to press the pager's call button. I almost didn't want to know if they were in my shed. I didn't want that to be a reality, but I pressed it anyways. I heard two screeching beeps from the other line and they cut the call in an instant. I ran downstairs, woke my parents, and had them get our family's rifle. We all went outside and crossed the yard to the shed. We opened the door with the rifle aimed. I was drenched in a fearful sweat and really terrified. But there was nobody there. The bottles and sleeping bag were gone. The only thing out of place was a smashed pager in the middle of the floor. That was last night. I really don't have any clue of what to do. This person knows where I live, where I work. Hell, they probably know where I go to school. I know a lot of you probably don't believe me, but I have proof. I'll post the number and if you call, you'll get the message. We could not complete your call. Please try again. Just be sure to block your caller ID. I don't want this person calling you too. The number is 760-705-8888. I have to go now. I I'm getting a phone call really hope it isn't who I think it is.